that's that is not Brian. Then they get a partial dental. Uh, they get a partial dental match, and so I, you know, call my dentist. What does that mean? He means that means that there's teeth. I go partial. It's like a partial fingerprint. It's not a full one. They can't say that. And lo and behold, allegedly, the uncle to Brian is the dentist. Welcome to Reporter Room, where we seek truth and justice. My name is Jessica Della Davies. I'm an investigative journalist and today we're going to talk about the connections of Brian Laundry to the mysterious murders of a Moonflower Grocery employee, Kylan Schulte, and wife Crystal Turner. We're going to discuss the lack of mainstream media coverage on this case. And we're going to talk about why Chris and Roberta Laundry, Brian Laundry's parents, have refused to speak to authorities. And last, we're going to talk about Dog the Bounty Hunter's assertion that 50-50 chances are that Brian's remains are not actually Brian's remains. Let's get into it. It's been nearly three months since Kylan's father, Sean Paul Schulte, crowdsourced on social media to help find Kylan and Crystal. Three months since Cindy Sue Hunter found their campsite with the remains near Moab, Utah. Despite the ongoing investigation by local and federal authorities, no one has been held accountable. Everything I'm sharing with you is my opinion, so please do not send any hate to anyone, anywhere, anytime. Let's be kind and good to each other. And before we go any further, please take a moment to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up so I know that you were here. Crystal and Kylan were last seen at 9.30 at Woody's Tavern on Friday, August 13th. Woody is a bar in Moab, just two minutes down the road from the Bowen Motel where the police put Brian. You may recall Brian was stopped on August 12th after a witness called 911 to report him for slapping Gabby Petito outside the Moonflower Grocery Co-op. Who was working at the Moonflower Grocery Co-op that day? Kylan was. It's a tiny grocery and we know from witness reports that Gabby and Brian were reportedly seen near the Moonflower Grocery on and off for that day of August the 12th. So Brian would have seen Kylan. Even worse, Brian knew someone reported him to the Mohab police, but he didn't know who. Did he think it was Kylan? Just two days after Brian ran home to Northport, Florida, to his parents' house, Crystal and Kylan were found at their obscure campsite near Mohab. In early September, a warrant detailing what police found when they arrived at the campsite offered us all new insight into this important case. We learned that the women were found in a nearby creek with multiple gunshot wounds. We know investigators requested a tower dump from a cell tower at Jimmy Keene Flats near the women's campsite. The warrant is from 9 p.m. August 13th through 9 a.m. Sunday, August 15th, and was within a two mile radius of the crime scene. So let's look at the gun found at the Fort DeSoto Park campsite. Is this related to Kylan and Crystal? Somebody didn't want it to be found. It was weighted down with a brick. Thanks to Dog the Bounty Hunter, we know that Roberta, Chris, and Brian all went camping the second time Brian came home. This time was after Gabby disappeared. So Brian was welcomed home by his parents, Roberta and Chris Laundry, without Gabby on September 1st. He arrived home from a van life trip without Gabby and they didn't ask him any questions. Do you buy that? This is even though he showed up September 1st driving Gabby's van using her credit cards and had Gabby's cell phone allegedly. By the way, don't forget that beginning Wednesday, November 17th, you're invited to join me for killer coffee and crime chats every Wednesday at 3 p.m. New York time. So 
On Wednesdays, put on something comfy, grab some snacks and coffee, and let's cozy up and chat at 3 p.m. So did Roberta and Chris know what Brian did to Gabby? Their actions suggest they most certainly may have known. They ignored frantic calls from Gabby's family, asking them if they knew where she was. They quickly hired an attorney, Stephen Bertolino. They refused to answer any questions about Gabby and her whereabouts, despite multiple asks from the authorities. So my question is, did they also help Brian dispose of a gun? If so, they are accessories after the fact, in my opinion. We're going to talk more about this in a few minutes, so stay with me. So, late in August, the Grand County Sheriff's Office determined somehow that Brian was not connected to Kylan and Crystal, but they haven't offered up any details as to how they ruled Brian out. This is leaving many of us to wonder if tourism is being placed ahead of justice in Moab. Moab is a tiny town of around 5,000 people, so a double homicide is highly unusual. The private investigator, Jason Jensen, hired by Kylan's father, Sean Paul, has also refused to rule out Brian. Many people believe there may be a connection. After all, who would have motivation to hurt Kylan and Crystal? Now, we know that a mysterious gun was located where the Laundry family was camping, and I'm going to deal with this shortly, so stay with me until the end. Who had a motivation to hurt these women? Well, Brian did. For more on Brian's motive, opportunity, and means, please see my video, Brian is a Serial Killer, Part 2. I will link it for you in the description below. So Jason Jensen, the private investigator, said that Crystal and Kylan told Kylan's dad, Sean Paul, that a, quote, creeper dude had caused them to move their campsite. Meanwhile, the mainstream media has remained largely silent on this case, and I think we can all guess why. Why do you think the case of Kylan and Crystal has not gotten the media attention that it deserves? I promise Reporter Room will continue to follow this case. Kylan and Crystal's remains were found in the South Mesa area of the LaSalle Loop Road after going missing several days earlier. This was shortly after Brian and Gabby had been seen in the area. And to be clear, I don't believe Gabby had anything to do with what happened to Kylan and Crystal. Brian, however, is another story. Brian would have been humiliated after being forced by Moab police after the August 12th police stop to have to sleep at the Bowen Motel? Was he angry because his narcissist mask came off? Was he looking for someone to scapegoat? For someone to blame? Brian would not have known who called the police on him about the altercation at the Moonflower Grocery Co-op but he would have seen Kylan working there as a cashier that day. And the only person who knows where Brian was on August 13th and 14th was Gabby Petito. Is this why she's no longer with us? By the way, I've started a Reporter Room True Crime group on Facebook if you're interested. So the private investigator stated, quote, until we can prove that he was out of the area, he, and he's meaning Brian here, has to be considered until he is adequately ruled out. Online sleuths have been instrumental in finding Gabby. Without them, she may never have been found. Will these same sleuths also help solve the Kylan and Crystal case? So whatever happened to the keys that Sean Paul gave to the police after conducting his own search of the crime scene. We know on Brian's Instagram, he shared an image of him assisting a child at a rock climbing gym. Is this the same Instagram account that has suddenly been taken down? Who took it down? So let's look at the facts in this case. First, Gabby and Brian reportedly fought outside the store where Kylan works that resulted in the now famous August 12th Moab police stop. Second, 
Kylan and Crystal were last seen leaving Woody's Tavern at about 9.30 on the very next day, August the 13th, the day after Brian was driven by police to the Bowen Motel just two minutes down the road from Woody's. Three, we know a gun was used, and now we know a gun was found in the water, weighted down with a brick, off the shore of Fort DeSoto Park campgrounds, where Brian and his parents went to relax after ignoring Gabby's parents' frantic phone calls. Is this a coincidence? And for anyone out there who wants me to feel sorry for Roberta and Chris, I say no thank you. I'm saving my compassion for Gabby Petito's family. They showed no compassion for her family. They showed no empathy. They showed no concern. I have no sympathy for them. Fourth, Brian ran home to his parents' house after both homicides occurred. The Laundry family has changed their reasons for Brian's return home after August 16th, when Kylan and Crystal were reported missing by co-workers. We know Brian wasn't cleaning out a storage locker to save money because Gabby was put up in a hotel called the Fairfield Inn and Suites near Salt Lake City International Airport. She was in this hotel for multiple nights. This hotel stay combined with Brian's airfare would have exceeded any savings on a storage locker. And by the way, a storage locker in the Northport, Florida area runs around $100 a night. Fifth, Gabby was found in a similar manner to Kylan and Crystal. Just like Kylan and Crystal, Gabby was found in a remote area near a creek near a camping site. Sixth, we know from the images of Brian's bedroom that he owned a weapon. We know from this image on Instagram that Gabby and Brian had one on their van life trip. And again, I don't think Gabby was involved in the Kylan and Crystal case. Subscribe and let me know in the comment section if you think Brian should be an official suspect in this case.